The Curtis Wright XP-55 Ascender is a premium prop fighter in War Thunder. Let's check it out. In late 1939, the U.S. Army Air Corps put out a request for proposals intentionally seeking unusual designs for a new fighter project. Among several of the experimental proposals was the XP-55, which featured a pusher propeller and a swept wing, both very atypical for a fighter aircraft in those days, and after a troublesome development period, the first prototype flew in 1943. The plane had originally been intended to use an experimental new H-block layout engine, but the engine was cancelled after some pretty serious problems, and they had to tweak the plane a bit to accept a more traditional V-12 power plant. After the XP-55 went through evaluation, a large number of problems were found with the initial design, and the first prototype ended up being lost in an early test flight. Eventually, most of the problems were fixed, and the third prototype featured some aerodynamic fixes, structural improvements, and slightly enlarged canards. After some validation testing, the design was considered ready, and a prototype was submitted for formal evaluation by the Army. Unfortunately, the performance of the XP-55 did not live up to expectations, mostly the result of the substitute engine, and the aircraft just being unable to achieve the speeds where its swept wing would really benefit. Now, when tested in mock dogfights against P-40 Warhawks and P-47s, the results weren't good for the XP-55, and the project was eventually cancelled. As a final indignity, the final prototype crashed into a crowd of spectators at an air show in 1945, killing the pilot and four people in the crowd. The project did provide some useful wind tunnel data, though, and practical experience with swept-wing designs that would be put to use after the war. But, in its day, the XP-55 ended up being a failure in its intended role as a high-speed fighter. In War Thunder, the XP-55 is a premium fighter in Rank 2 of the American Air Tree, sitting at BR 4.3. As a low-tier vehicle, this plane doesn't really have any advanced features like a radar set or anything, and it also doesn't have any kind of external weapon loadouts. Its entire weapon system consists of two 20mm cannons and two machine guns. The good news is that all four of these weapons are mounted right in the nose, right on the center line, which makes aiming a bit easier. You get five ammo belts for each gun, but just know that the ballistics are a bit different between them. The overall burst mass of the guns is Pretty average for a fighter around this tier. Adequate, but nothing special. The flight performance of the XP-55 is pretty unusual for a plane in Rank 2. First, it has very good rate of climb, and I was honestly surprised at how well this plane does with a basic WEP climb out to altitude. Its acceleration and level flight is decent through the low end of the power curve, but flattens out a bit once you get up to speed. The maneuverability and overall agility isn't as good as most of the other planes it faces, with some caveats. It has good turning performance and agility at higher speeds, but the problem is that you won't spend much time dogfighting at those higher speeds, since you're more likely to be in a pretty low energy state during or immediately after an initial climb out by the time you get into combat. And also, just from bleeding off energy during the opening maneuvers of an engagement. If you want to retain agility on the XP-55, you have to fly very carefully and try to manage the speed. Also noteworthy is that the controls will compress hard in a high-speed dive, so be careful and watch the throttle when you're diving in on someone. The good news is that it's dive performance is otherwise amazing, largely thanks to the swept wings. The XP-55 gains an enormous amount of speed in a dive, and if you punch the throttle coming out of a dive, you can retain that energy pretty well into level flight. Flying the XP-55 into missions is mostly pretty basic low-tier fighter gameplay. However, 
The great climb performance, combined with its dive speed and centerline guns, give this plane really good potential for boom and zoom tactics. Just make sure that if you end up flying this into arcade battles, you don't go spawn camping with it. Don't be that guy. Something important to be aware of, the plane has a pusher prop, and its engine is mounted in the back of the fuselage. Obviously. But this ends up making the plane especially vulnerable to damage from opponents taking shots at you in a tail chase. Even small caliber fire can bust up your cooling system pretty badly. But the good news is, with the plane's insane dive performance, if you've got the altitude, you can just dive away and get out of range of, you know, troublesome opponents pretty quickly. Overall, the plane's performance lends more towards a vulture playstyle rather than close-in dogfighting or mixing it up in a furball. As always, though, you can get away with a bit more in arcade battles, and I managed some fun dogfights with it. Just know that many of the other fighters will eventually get the jump on it in prolonged turn fights. In shorter engagements, though, the XP-55 can often do much better, but keeping the speed up is essential. The lack of external weapons really limits any close air support potential, and its 20mm cannons just don't pack enough punch to reliably attack even medium tanks. Probably just stick to air battles with this one. Visually, the XP-55 is a pretty odd-looking, but distinct aircraft. It's one of the lowest-ranked planes in War Thunder with swept wings, and one of the only props. I've always liked pusher prop designs, but the only paint job you get is the generic olive drop one. There are some really great community skins out there for the plane, though, so definitely check those out if you're interested in spicing up the visuals a bit. Now, landing the XP-55 is a lot easier than most other props around this tier. Since it has a tricycle landing gear and the tail-mounted engine, it's basically impossible to flip this one nose over on landing. So, as soon as you touch the ground, you can just give max deflection on the elevator and lock up the brakes. The cockpit has pretty poor overall visibility. But the instrument placement is solid, and the gun sight is excellent. The nose-mounted guns go right where you want them to, and surprisingly, I had an easier time aiming the guns in VR than I did in the regular external mode on my monitor. To close out on the XP-55 Ascender, this plane has an excellent rate of climb, has good dive speed, the guns are easy to aim, and it turns well at higher speeds. However, the rear-mounted engine layout is very vulnerable to enemy fire in a tail chase. The controls lock up hard if you push too close to the red line in a dive. It has no external weapons, and its maneuverability isn't great at lower speeds. The final verdict on the XP-55 is that this is a very effective fighter if used in a vulture style of boom and zoom gameplay. Just don't be a spawn camper. As always, thanks for watching.